Hey everyone, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're joining in from. Welcome, come on in to our Zoom room. We're so happy to have you here. If you're here for the self-care webinar on meditation and trauma-conscious yoga, you're in the right place. And we're so happy to have you here. Thank you for choosing to spend your lunch break or your morning break with us. We're really honored to have you here. I see so many familiar names already. It's so nice to have you here. If you'd like, we'd love to hear from you. So if you want to introduce yourself in the chat and say hello to us and do a shout out to your organization, your nonprofit, your higher ed institution, we'd love to hear from you. A reminder to send the chat to panelists and attendees. There's a little drop down arrow. You just click panelists and attendees so that we can all hear from you. I'll send a quick chat here, but we would love to hear from you. So we have David Richardson from Oakwood University. Thank you for joining us here. I know there are quite a few Oakwood staff members and I'm so happy to have you all here. Susie from Austin Community College, welcome. Geneva from ACC again, Austin Community. We're based in Austin, so this is in our backyard. It's so nice to have our neighbors here. Palo Alto College, the SHARE Center from San Antonio, Texas. We have Devin from the University of Alaska. Welcome. That's a bit of ways from Austin, Texas, but we're so happy to have you here. We have Heather here. And I will not be properly pronouncing this college, but Tribal College located in South Dakota. So welcome, welcome. We have the Manhattan Community College, Vivian from University of Houston. St. Mary's University in San Antonio. So nice to have so many of you here with us today. Keep on sending us your hellos, your introductions, do a shout out to your organizations. We're going to allow for just another moment um, for more panelists to, or I'm sorry, more attendees to join us live. And as soon as we have a good amount here live with us, we'll go ahead and get started. I see CSU Long Beach Trio. I am a graduate of a Trio program. It's one of the reasons why I went to college. So shout out to the Trio program. We have College Track, San Antonio University of Incarnate Word. So nice to have so many of you here today. Thank you for joining us. Madison College Trio, Wisconsin, more ACC folks. That's great. Again, reminder to send your chat to panelists and attendees so everybody in the audience can see it. And we'll give it just another minute or so before we get started. And we have a Trellis Foundation board member joining us. Welcome, Alma. It's so nice to have you here. This is great. It's so nice to see so many familiar names. We can't see your faces. We wish we could, uh, but it's so nice to have you all here. So it's 12.01. We have a, a pretty good audience here so far. Um, hey, Richard. So we'll go ahead and, and get started. It looks like Natita and Lexi, you both are ready to go. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get started with our official introduction. So hello everyone again and welcome. My name is Sana Megani. I'm the co-creator and moderator for this webinar series, It's Okay to Not Be Okay. This webinar series is made possible by Trellis Company and Trellis Foundation. Trellis Company is a 501c3 nonprofit with nearly 40 years of history in working to promote access and success in higher education. The Community Investment Division, where I work, provides services to students, institutions, and policymakers. This is co-sponsored by the Trellis Foundation, and the Trellis Foundation focuses on improving attainment for low to moderate income students as they pursue post-secondary credentials and degrees in the state of Texas. Thank you to the foundation team, Kristen and Jenny, for all of your support and for making sure that this webinar series is possible. Also, everyone behind the scenes, my team, Steve, Brian, our comm staff, everybody who supported me along the way and made sure that we were able to bring in a world-class series of speakers, including the one we have today. So thank you so much for everyone on the Trellis Foundation team and at Trellis Company. This series is an extension of the self-care and wellness workshop Lexi and I did 
way back when in July, we, what we thought would be just one webinar turned into an entire series. Um, as professionals of color supporting students in higher education, we were very much aware and continue to be of not only the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on our communities, but also the physical, emotional, and mental toll it takes to live, work, survive, and even thrive during the COVID and racial pandemics. We're facing a number of challenges this year, and it's been a tough year. Um, and we designed this webinar series to address yourself, how to support your colleagues, how to be an ally, and we're going to end this one with resting. There are no learning objectives today. We don't have a PowerPoint deck. We are going to breathe and meditate and be with each other as much as we can in this virtual space so that we can start to have conversations about healing, about moving forward, and about starting this upcoming new year with a positive note. And with the year that it's been for many of us um, black and brown professionals, I can say that I am very much looking forward to today's webinar. Uh, I am really excited to have our guest speaker here today. But before I introduce her, I have to introduce my sister, Lexi. She has been the co-creator for this series and she has supported me in more ways than one. And I could not do it justice by sharing all those ways right now. But welcome back, Lexi. Uh, Lexi is a licensed professional counselor and currently specializes in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, grief and loss, young adults and trauma. And so thanks, Lexi, and welcome back. And then, of course, super, super excited to welcome our new guest speaker, Natita. Natita is a licensed somatic psychotherapist, yoga teacher, trauma specialist, speaker, writer, and heart-centered activist. Since 2006, Natita has served as a yoga educator, working within the intersections of yoga, mental health, embodied activism, and community advocacy. She is the founder of the Trauma Conscious Yoga Institute here in Austin, and we are so honored to have her here with us today. So before we kick it off and you get to hear how special our session for you today is, I'm going to give it to Lexi to say hello, to do a quick summary, and then we'll be off with a meditation, a yoga session, and we'll have a Q&A at the end. Thanks, y'all. I'm so happy to have you here today. Hi, everyone. It's so nice that everyone was able to come back to us after this, uh, after the year that it's been. Uh, so we're very excited to have you join us in this last month. I know many of you are probably wrapping up semesters, um, potentially wrapping up years. Um, and so it's very important that we can all spend this time together. And we have experienced so much just even in the last six months, not just I mean, the whole year, but the last six months have definitely felt so compact. Um, and we've experienced the daily effects and not just your experiences, right? But your the experiences of your colleagues, of your students, um, of your employees, of your managers, of racism, poverty, um, tokenism. We've talked about tokenism um, and COVID. This pandemic has just created layers upon layers of stress on everyone. Um, and you've been asked to show up every single day to work, uh, whether that is Zoom and keep your video on, right? You have to keep your video on and be engaged. Um, or if you're back on campus or back in your office, there is this constant fear of safety, of would I bring something home to my children, to my family, to my husband, to my partners? Uh, and so we're, we're dealing with that on a daily basis, and yet you're still being asked to show up eight hours a day, a work day, if not more. I think many of us have ended up working more during this time. So I'm really glad that you're all here and able to give us this hour today. Um, in addition to, to the racial pandemic, COVID pandemic, uh, whether or not we have jobs, whether or not our students have jobs. And, and right now in December, are they going home to poverty? Do they have a home to go to? You may be worrying about some of your students. So we understand and that's why we're here for you today. And so we just wanna quickly go over, if you've joined us for the previous webinar, kind of why we're here today, how this all culminates into today. Uh, we remember we learned about burnout and trauma uh, compassion fatigue and vicarious trauma in the first webinar, if you joined us. Um, how do you navigate each of those? How do you identify them, first of all, and know what to do with it once you've identified it? Because if you don't identify that first, how will you be able to show up for other people if you can't engage in some amount of self-care? 
So we discussed that and we discussed it through the eight dimensions of wellness, uh, how to meet your needs. So if you remember that, those webinars are all posted still if you want to go back and take a look um, along with the slide deck. Uh, after that webinar, we built on that. So now that you've supported yourself and you've learned about how to meet your personal needs, how do you set boundaries? I think we talked about boundaries almost in every conversation because they're so important. Um, how can you set boundaries and how can you support your students and colleagues, your manager, your employees with those boundaries, with acknowledging your own vicarious trauma during this time? Uh, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the importance of understanding where you fall on that pyramid right now um, as to why you're unable to meet other people's needs potentially. Um, and the importance of assertive communication, the importance of the meaning making process as well. Um, once you're complete that traumatic event, we've talked about traumatic events, once you've passed that traumatic event and you're ready to make meaning. Um, and also today can help with the meaning making process too. Um, after that webinar, we moved into discussing racial trauma a little bit more and more about actionable allyship and what that looks like. Um, that was a great webinar. Again, they're all posted. Uh, we discuss grief and how grief can impact uh, racism, how they're very interconnected um, and the daily impacts that it has on our physical, mental and emotional health. I know you've all experienced that. We've seen that in the chat. We've heard from you uh, and we discuss steps on what it looks like to try and make a difference in your organization or where you work. So now today, after, after all of that, uh, Natita is here and she's ready to help us meditate. She's ready to help us learn and uh, teach us how to move trauma through our bodies, right? It's not, it's not just enough to talk about it, but like, what do I do with this like ball of energy, this weight that I feel like I've been holding on to, especially for the last few months? Um, and moving trauma through the body through this pandemic, the pandemic trauma, racial trauma, death trauma, especially, and that could have been racial or uh, through the pandemic, it's an important step towards integrating our experiences and potentially being ready for the meaning making process. Um, so we can learn so much from the somatic experience of trauma. And I'm so glad that Natita is here with us today to share her wisdom and warmth with us. So we're so happy to have you, Natita. Okay, so with that, we'll hand it over to Natita. Lexi and I will be here in the chat. We'll be, if you send us your questions, your comments, we'll have time set at the end to address any of your questions. But I'll ask now, can you put away your phone? Can you turn off your Teams chat or your Slack channel or whatever you have going on? And can you commit to the next 50 minutes to be with us here today fully. Um, you know, I'm, I'm also going to turn off my iPhone notifications too. So if you got this little thing, thing pinging you, turn it all off, put it all away. And can you give yourself permission to be here for yourself to spend this 50 minutes with Natita? So quick reminder, you know, I, of course, if you're on call, you got other things going on, we understand, but I invite you to put it all away and just spend this 50 minutes with us. So with that, Natita, it's all you. Thank you. Thank you, Sana and Lexi, for those introductions. And hello, everyone. Uh, I can't physically see you, but I see you and I, I feel you. And I'm grateful for you and grateful that you're here and honored to be here with you. Uh, just thinking about what Sana said, it's so interesting how available we make ourselves. You know, there's like a million notifications from 25 different apps we might get at a particular time. But I find in my work with people that we don't make ourselves available to ourselves a lot of the time, right? So just to reemphasize what Sana said, yes, if you could, it's put all of that away and it's, it's not easy to mentally put it away, but physically, you know, I, I would like to be here with you, present today, guide you through a bit of a journey. And uh, again, I'm honored to be here. So we'll start with a little bit of meditation and breath work and getting centered together. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what yoga is because there's some misconceptions about what yoga is and then we'll get moving. Okay, so you can be seated on the floor on a yoga mat or a blanket if you have one, but you can also be seated in a chair. You can be standing up. Please, throughout this entire practice, do what makes your body comfortable. Again, be available to yourself to really go in and listen to what your body needs. Be compassionate if you can be. You don't have to do everything that I ask you or offer that you do, do what feels right for you, 
Okay. I'm going to move my screen back a little bit. And so I'm going to invite us to take a gesture with our hands. In yoga, these gestures are called mudras. So we're going to take our fingertips. And if you're on the ground, just place your fingertips on the ground on either side of you. If you're in a chair, then your feet are going to take the mudra. You'll bring your feet flat against the ground. All right. So again, if you're in a chair, feet flat against the ground. If you're on the ground, fingertips to the ground. One hand on either side of you. Take a moment to wiggle around if you would like. And then if it's comfortable, I do offer that you close your eyes. Take an exhalation. Inviting yourself to land not only into your own body, but into the here and now. Getting really close to the present moment as if it were the only moment. No past, no future, right here, right now. As you begin to lean into this connection you have with the earth, I wanna invite us to take a moment to offer gratitude to this land, to this soil, to acknowledge that there were indigenous ancestors who walked the soil long before we did, and to really pay homage and tribute and take a breath for the indigenous ancestors who, who gave so much, but who also had a lot taken from them. You can be aware of the breath. And as you're becoming aware of your breath, I invite you to notice your body. The body holds the story of our history and our present, right? So connecting to the here and now, how is your body doing? What do you notice? What is it like to be in your body right here, right now? A lot can show up when we look inward toward our body, right? It's brown and black people, those of us who are. We've had a lot projected onto our bodies. by way of the ways that others have identified us, we sometimes have leaned into particular identities that don't belong to us and don't serve us. So I invite you, yoga is about uncovering the truth. What is true about your body right now? In this moment. And the lies and the projections tend to be very complex, but the truth is very simple usually. What is true about your body right now? And if you do feel connected to that part of you, what we would call the higher self, the part of you that is unconditionally loving, unconditionally compassionate, if you feel connected to that part at all, I invite you to be with that part of you, your higher self, the wisest, most loving, most empathetic part of you. And from that part, offering the other parts of you, love and empathy and compassion. So we'll be here for about another minute. And for this next minute, I invite you to continue to notice your body. Notice what shows up. All things are welcome, right? There's no good or bad. Leaning in with compassion to whatever arises. I invite you to deepen your breath if you'd like. You can feel your hips connected to the ground or a yoga mat or a chair. 
And as you take a deep breath in, imagine energy rising up from your hips all the way up through the crown of your head. You can imagine a white light of energy shining up as you take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, envisioning that light descending back down from the crown of the head toward the earth. And taking about four more breaths like that. So it doesn't matter how you're breathing. It doesn't matter if it's through the nose or the mouth. Just taking a deep breath. Beginning to find as you breathe that there are places where you're harboring tension or resistance. And getting curious if any of that is ready to release. I invite you to take one more round of breath. I just want to ask you a question. What is it you would like to believe about yourself right now? Regardless of whether or not you think it's true, what would you like to believe about yourself right now? So maybe it's an I am statement. Just see what appears before you without grasping toward anything. Get curious. For some of you, you're not getting anything. That's fine. For some of you, maybe something shows up. And let that be your mantra, your affirmation. I'm going to use the example, I am love. And maybe you could use that too if nothing came in for you. All right, so it's all good. But I invite you to repeat your affirmation to yourself if you have one. For example, I am love. And just notice where in your body does that affirmation resonate? Is it your head, your heart, your legs? And with that, taking one more breath in and out. And if your eyes are closed, I invite you, when you're ready, to open them back up. All right. So we're going to get moving in a moment. But before we do, I want to talk to you a little bit about what yoga is. Um, and because we are over here in the West, right? I'm pretty sure everybody here is in the United States. Um, Sorry, correct me if I'm wrong. But in the West, we tend to have a particular idea about what yoga is, right? So there are many different levels and layers to yoga. And I want to leave you here today with a more clear impression, right? So it's going to be short, but it's going to be a little bit of an intro. So yoga is not an English word. It's a Sanskrit word. Sanskrit is an ancient Indian language. Yoga is a Sanskrit word that means to yoke or to unite, right? So Sanskrit, this ancient Indian language, uh, yoga, the yoga that we tend to practice here in the West comes from South Asia. The tradition of yoga that we tend to practice, Hatha yoga, comes specifically from India, right? And I think it's important to note that, right? To when we're borrowing practices from another culture to really honor and pay tribute to that culture and not pretend that we came up with it, right? But yoga, you know, in the West, yoga has become synonymous with the word asana, which is another Sanskrit word. So the asanas are the different poses and the different movements that we do in yoga. Um, and we'll do some asanas and some poses today, right? So most people, when they think of yoga, they think, okay, that means I'm rolling on a mat. I'm going to do like a child's pose and a downward facing dog and blah, blah, blah. And that's yoga, right? So I want to be clear that asana is one part of yoga, but you don't actually have to practice asana to be a yogi, right? You can practice purely meditation and that is yoga. You can practice showing up as a loving and kind person in the world. And that is yoga because what yoga actually is, is love, right? So yoga, it's a spiritual path right? Um, 
It's about dismantling the ego so that we can see oneness between all things, right? It's a path to enlightenment. So within yoga, when we refer to the ego, what we're talking about is the part of us that sees the world through the lens of I, me, mine. I, me, mine. That is how our ego sees things, right? In the meditation, I refer to the higher self. The higher self is different than the ego. The higher self is the part of us that understands the oneness, that understands the interconnectedness. The ego says it's mine and it's me and I'm separate from you, right? So it's not totally bad to have an ego. We need healthy ego development to grow into the people that we are, right? And understand who we are. But if you think about racism, classism, sexism, ageism, ableism, all the isms, right? Um, those are all systems or ideologies that have come to be because of the ego, which says, I am separate than you. I'm black, you're white, we're different. Right. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. <laughs> I'm a Democrat. You're a Republican. <laughs> We're different. Right. I'm a woman. You're a man. We're different. Uh, you know, and while there can be some usefulness to that at times, right, that has created a lot of the problems that we see in our world. Right. So yoga is about dismantling the ego. It's about uplifting the veil and uncovering what is true, remembering the truth about ourselves and all others in the world that we occupy this land with. Okay. Um, and so yoga isn't something that we do because you don't do love. You don't do enlightenment. Okay. Yoga involves us doing practices like meditation, breath work, asanas or the, the physical poses so that we can find out where we're harboring resistance inside to yoga. Where inside do we have resistance to love? Where inside do we have resistance toward union, toward oneness, right? So that is what yoga is. I actually was gonna give you a little bit more just to give you an example. I grew up in a household with a father who is a Raja Yogi. He identifies as a Raja Yogi. So Raja Yogis, for example, they don't do any of the asanas. They don't do any of the physical practice necessarily. What Raja Yoga is about is about reading the text. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali specifically is the text that the Raja Yogis like to refer to. And then they practice meditation. All right. So I just want to begin to dismantle today this idea that I'm doing yoga because I'm on a mat, right? No, we're doing yoga, we're practicing asanas and different shapes so we can learn about where there is work to be done to heal so that we can experience not only union with, within ourselves, but within connected to others, okay? It's about uniting darkness with light, bringing what is in the dark to the light. Yoga is wonderful for metabolizing trauma through the body when you are doing the physical shapes. And so we are going to explore that today right? because we're holding a lot all the time. We're taking on a lot. The vicarious trauma is very real in addition to the intergenerational trauma that we've all inherited that's within our own consciousness and the collective consciousness, right? So we're going to practice moving through some things today, right? But I just want to be really upfront about, you know, you don't have to be able to walk to practice yoga, right? You don't have to be able to stand on your hands to practice yoga. You can't be good at yoga because you can't be good at love. You can't be good at enlightenment. It's something that you work toward every day, right? It's about just showing up with a little more kindness and a little more compassion every single day. All right, so with that said, I invite you to, again, sit however you'd like or stand up if that's better for you. I'm going to move myself back a little bit so you can see more of my space. I have my phone because I will be putting music on <laughs> in a moment, but I won't be texting, all right? So get comfortable. You can sit any way that you'd like. And if you are in a chair, have your feet flat on the ground. All right. We're going to bring our hands to our heart. And if you'd like, close the eyes. And again, check back in. What's showing up for you right now? I'm just getting curious about it, breathing with it. Good. 
I invite you to interlace your fingers. So it's more like a fist, a gentle fist. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, you can open your eyes if you want. Press the palms forward so your arms are parallel to the ground, palms facing away from you, straightening the elbows, pressing through the heels of your palms. Take a deep breath in. And then begin to exhale and round your back, letting your chin go toward your chest and pressing the palms forward. We're gonna breathe here. I invite you to notice what sensations you feel arising in your body. And I invite you to move toward the sensation if it feels okay, breathing with it. Taking a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Keeping the hands clasped, begin to lift up. Good, so the arms come alongside the ears, pushing up through the palms. Maybe wiggle a, side, a little bit side to side to create space. Take another breath in and take a breath out. We can breathe in again, let our shoulders lift up to our ears, create tension. As you breathe out, let the shoulders drop, shake your hands out and bring them down by your side. Observe the energy moving through the body. And then I invite you to lift your left arm up. Right hand is down on the ground or on the arm of your chair. Good. And begin to bend over to the right. Then I invite you to breathe here. You can begin to notice where you feel sensation rising in the body. And it's that part of the body that needs your attention. So breathing toward that space with compassion. And you can stay here. And so what's useful about doing the asanas, going into these different poses, is that things happen mentally and physically, right? And it's a space for us to learn about ourselves and our reactions and our conditioning, right? So take another breath in. And as you breathe out, come back up and your left hand can go to your right knee. You're gonna take a little bit of a twist. So right hand behind you, turning to the right. So this is like, you know, it's all like a big experiment. How do you respond to the different sensations you feel arising in your body? How do you speak to your body when you're in these poses? How do you Think about your body and is it loving, right? Because if it's not loving, it's not yoga. And that's okay, but we're just curious about it. One more breath in. And then as you breathe out, gently begin to unwind, okay. placing your hands back on your knees. Go ahead and cross your legs the opposite way. If you're in a chair, you don't have to cross them. All right, and then left hand down, right arm up. Take a deep breath in, feel energy rise up the entire spine, and then exhale, bending over to the left. Good, breathing there. Okay. Is there anything you've been avoiding, right? That's showing up in your body right now. And it's today to, the day to make a, a bit of a change in how you react and respond to what's arising within you. You can move your head all around any way that you'd like. Some people like to gaze up under the top arm. But I invite you to take one more breath in and out. And as you come up to sit, keeping the right arm lifted, Right hand crosses in front of you, meets your left knee. Left hand behind you, twisting to the left. And at any point in this practice, you can use your mantra, your affirmation. Not only is it something that can serve as an upliftment to your spirit, but it can help keep you connected to the present moment. So I am love, breathing in or whatever your affirmation was.
Then I invite you to face forward when you're ready. All right. So I think I'm going to move my camera back a little bit more so you can see more of my body. I'm going to invite us to shake our legs out in front of us for a moment. You can shake your legs out. I'm going to move my camera back a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to invite us to come stand up. So we're gonna pose a mountain pose. So you can bring your feet about hip width apart. Good. And if possible, have the toes going straight forward if that's comfortable for your body. You can bend your knees a little bit. Okay. And you can turn the palms to face forward. The knees are slightly bent so that you can really let your feet relax and sink into the ground. And then allow your spine to extend upward. Feeling your connection to the ground. You can begin to notice the texture of the ground underneath your feet. And standing tall. What do you feel in your body as you take this shape, mountain pose? Or in Sanskrit, we call it Tadasana. Sometimes just moving the body into a different shape can help us embody a different quality or state of mind. I'm going to breathe in, lift the arms up. Press the palms above the head so the hands are in a prayer. And exhale the hands down to the heart. Let's do that several more times. So you can inhale, lift the arms up. But if it's hard to coordinate the breath, don't worry about that. Just keep breathing and moving the arms. But maybe exhaling hands to heart. As long as you're breathing, it's fine. Arms go up. And hands go to heart. And we'll do that one more time. Arms go up. Hands go to heart. Good. Pausing, checking in. Adding on, arms go up, good. This time, bend your knees, hands come past the heart and touch the ground, whoa. <laughs> yes, if you have been not been moving a lot, it's gonna feel tight and that's okay. So I invite you to stay in the forward fold. I'm just gonna come up so I can speak to you. So you're hanging forward over your legs. Definitely bend your knees so that your hands can come to the ground. Or if you have books or yoga blocks, you can bring your hands onto them, but you're folding forward. So this is a particular asana where resistance shows up, right? So how do you react to that resistance? Okay. How do you respond? Get curious about it. No need to judge yourself for how you respond, but you're just learning about yourself, right? And then can you go in with your higher self, right? And just lean into the resistance, lean into the tightness or the tension or the looseness and flexibility if that's what's there, right? Be with it. It's all there to help you grow. Good. So I'm gonna invite you to hang out there for a little bit longer while I set up my music. I'm gonna play some music for us. And then notice your breathing. The breath is the barometer for how you're doing. If you can't breathe deeply in a particular pose, ease out of it a little bit. Right? We want to be able to breathe fully so we're not creating more trauma for the body, but we're actually helping to release it through the breath, through the movement. And so a little drum beat playing in the background. If it ends up being too loud, somebody please let me know in the chat. Okay, so hanging over your legs, take another exhalation. And then as you inhale, bring your hands towards your shins and come to a flat back. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just notice what it feels like, breathing in. And then breathing out, drop back down, bend the knees, drop your head, maybe exhale out the mouth. Inhale, hands to your shins, come halfway up. Exhale, hands down, fold. Bend the knees if you need to. Twice more, breathing in. 
Stretch the heart forward, right? Like you're sending energy out. And exhale, releasing it down. One more time, halfway up, breathing in. And exhale, fold. So a little bit different, bend your knees. With the knees bent, round your back and roll up. Slowly, slowly coming back to mountain pose. Feel the connection of the feet to the earth and lift the arms up, breathing in. Breathing out, hands to your heart. We're gonna put it all together. So inhale, lift the arms up. Gaze up. Exhale, hands past your heart. Bend your knees, touch the ground and fold. Exhale, let your chin come towards your heart. Drop the head. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway up. Exhale, let it go, all the way down. And then back up to stand, we'll do three more. Breathing in, lift all the way up. Feel the stretch in the opening. Exhale, fold all the way back down, hands past your heart to the ground. Inhale, flat back, heart forward. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up to stand. Press palms above head. Exhale, fold back down. And it becomes like a moving meditation. You can start to just feel it in your body. Don't worry about whether it's right or wrong and just be with the movement. Maybe even close your eyes. Take about two more rounds. Do anything that feels good for your body. This is your time. Only you know what's right for you. to the other side when you're ready. Good. All right, you can kind of move around, shake a leg, move your arms around, maybe do a little bit of a twist. Just take a moment to move any way that feels right for you. Okay. And then we'll meet back in mountain pose. <clears throat> So in yoga, because it's not just like gymnastics, there's a whole philosophy to it. There are different books that we read that go with yogic philosophy. And so there's a book called the Bhagavad Gita that speaks to yogic philosophy. In the Bhagavad Gita, they give a definition for yoga that I really love, that I wanna share with you. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it says that yoga is the practice of tolerating the consequences of being ourself. Yoga is the practice of tolerating the consequences of being ourself. So we practice the poses and the asanas, our little habits and our negative thoughts and our 
conditioning show up, right? So we're using this opportunity to be able to tolerate what shows up enough that we can learn about ourselves and evolve beyond that. All right, and so with that, we're gonna start balancing on one leg. <laughs> All right, so you're in mountain pose. All right, we're gonna stand on our right leg first. So let's do one of these. I'm in a new space that I haven't used before. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my feet. So we're standing on our right leg. You're gonna bend your left knee so your heel comes up off the ground. You're gonna rotate your left knee out to the side. And bring your foot to your right ankle. Then you could also do this at the wall or you could hold on to a chair. All right, we're gonna bring our hands to our heart. This is tree pose or rikshasana in Sanskrit. So here you're pretty steady. You feel that connection to the earth. Keeping that connection to the earth, you may choose to slide your foot up. You can slide your foot below your right knee. Please don't put your foot on your knee. That's not gonna be good for your knee. So either below the knee or maybe all the way up above the knee. What's happening in your mind? What's going on in there? What are you doing? Just noticing. Be lighthearted, be playful. Okay, I invite you to stay there, stay there. Okay, you're still there if you can. And if you fall, get back up. That's life. Okay, maybe lift the arms up. What's happening? Maybe drop your left wrist to your left knee. Maybe you bend to the left. Maybe you're falling, maybe you're balancing. There's no good, there's no bad. Maybe you fall on purpose so that you can practice getting back up. And I know you've been on this leg for a long time. Take two more cycles of breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Then come on up, hands to the heart. Rotate your left knee forward, step your foot down. All right, you can shake out your right leg if you'd like. Time goes by fast. All right, let's do the other side. So you're standing on the left leg. Right. You can pick up your right heel. Rotate your right leg outward. So the right foot at the left ankle. You can stay here, both feet on the ground, steady, right? But maybe you take a risk. Take a risk, maybe. Maybe the foot goes up to the calf. Just don't put your foot on your knee. That's gonna be bad for the left knee. So the right foot can be anywhere below the knee or anywhere above the knee. It's not better if your right foot's higher. You're not gonna be closer to enlightenment <laughs> or happier. All right, I'm gonna keep the music going. Little Anita Baker for you. Okay. So, hands at the heart. If you'd like, lift the arms up. You can dance, you can have fun. All right, if you'd like, right hand to right knee and bending over. You can also just come out of the pose and dance around, whatever makes you feel good. Where is your joy? Go toward that. Fall and come back. Get breathing. All right, take another breath. And 
to the heart when you're ready. Bring your knees forward. Step your foot down. All right, well, with this song on, I think we should move some energy through, and then we'll sit down. So I invite you to stand up, lift your arms up, breathe in, look up. Exhale, bend the knees, fold forward, arms over the head. Inhale up. pose. You'll see this at the end of every yoga class. We do a little thing here. If you have a blanket, I like to offer people to, now you don't have to have this, but if you do, you can unfold it part way. And then roll it up a little bit. This is going to go underneath your neck. So basically, you're making a roll to support your neck. So your neck, you know, it's a small area. So you're going to do a pretty small roll. All right, so maybe just roll it in once or twice. I'm going to show you. And then you're going to have the rest of the blanket going back behind the roll. And when you lay down, the roll is right there to support the curve of the neck. You can also put pillows under your knees, especially if you have any type of back pain. All right. And I just invite you to go there right away if you're coming to the final relaxation pose because we're out of time. <laughs> so I invite you just to go there. And just give yourself one more moment to rest. You might hear some some humming in the background. Thank you. Thanks, Sana. Okay, right, I've been given more time. So you've been given more time. Uh, so relax. You get to rest. Our ancestors didn't get to rest. We're here to heal the intergenerational trauma that we've inherited, right? Individually, collectively, rest. You can be quiet here. But if you'd like, you can hum along the music that you hear and see how that serves your soul.
be here just about another half minute. Is there anything you're still holding on to that you're ready to let go? Just get curious. You might begin to allow for that. Breathing awareness into your body. I invite you to move your fingers. You can stay on your back. Move your toes. And I'll join you on the back now for a moment. Move your fingers, move your toes. If you'd like, take a big stretch with the arms up over the head. And then if you'd like, draw the knees in. You can rock a little bit side to side. When you're ready, roll onto one side. Rest here for a moment. everyone. It's always hard to teach a short class <laughs> with so much to offer. Also, forgive me for calling Aretha Franklin Anita Baker. <laughs> I know some of you were like, what? I had a baby five months ago, five months ago, and the mom brain is so real. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, I think we're going to move on to some questions now. So Thank you. Thanks everyone for the comments. Thanks, Natita. That was amazing. Um, I don't know about y'all, but when she said you can dance, I was dancing. Um, I totally broke out of the asana and I was moving all over my office. Uh, if you have to head out, we completely understand. Um, please, please take that survey uh, that will pop up as soon as you exit the Zoom room. But if you can stick around, um, stick around for just a few more moments and we'll go into questions. And the first one is, um, what was the name of the book Natita referenced to quote her favorite quote of yoga? And I believe this was the Bhagavad Gita. Is that right, Natita? Yes, and I can put it here in the chat box because it's a Sanskrit, right? So, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita. Um, and you'll find different translations of it, and it's actually really um, digestible. It's not like this super hard to understand, understand scholarly text. It, it's so applicable to our lives. Uh, it, it's, yeah, one of my favorite ones. Uh, the next question is, will there be a spring series? First, thank you for attending our series and for coming to all of the webinars. Uh, right now, there are no plans for a spring series. I see more questions popping up in my personal inbox about more wellness series. And um, right now, there are no solid plans. We haven't really planned out the, the calendar year. Um, but if there are any, we will be sure to, we will be sure to reach out. And I see some more people saying, yes, we would love more. This is very humbling. Um, when Lexi and I set out to do this series, we, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know if anyone would show up actually. 
over the course of these four webinars, um, close to 1,500 people have registered and over 1,000 have attended live. And I cannot believe it. I cannot believe that you all showed up and you shared your stories and you were so honest and so vulnerable with us and you trusted us with that. Um, um, and so I'm just getting emotional, but I'm really honored to have this space and, and to be able to sit in this community with you all virtually from all the different places around the country that you are from. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Any other questions that are coming up? Um, any comments? There's a lot of happy holidays, a lot of gratitude. We hope that you all have a very happy and safe holiday season as well, um, whatever you are celebrating. And we do hope that you take a moment to celebrate yourself. Give yourself a big squeeze for showing up to these webinars and for doing something for yourself. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, someone, let me just jump in really quick. Uh, yeah. Natita, I don't know that I saw the book in the chat go to everyone. Um, so just in case, just the name of that book for, I didn't see oh, it. Oh, I know. I put it privately. Uh, Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Just to send to all the panelists. All panelists and attendees. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to put my email too, because somebody, oh, Sana, you already did. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I didn't change my, yeah, here's I, the book. Perfect. Thank you. It's right. There. The one question that has come up in previous webinars and has come up, you know, consistently in our work has been what does it look like to move past racial battle fatigue? What does it look like to continue the work of dismantling systemic oppression while still caring for yourself and for your family and for your loved ones? And that has come up constantly. And Lexi and I have sometimes answered and sometimes said, we're going to talk about this. We're going to get there. We're going to have a community discussion. And I think that this question sums up generally, Lexi, most of the kind of dialogue and conversation we've had, we've had online and offline with all the amazing community members and friends we've made. Natita, I'll ask you first, how would you answer that question? And what little nuggets of wisdom and, and support would you offer to our community members? And then Lexi will end with you. Yeah, it's a wonderful question. And it's, you know, there's no real easy answer to that. Um, I just, I truly believe that healing has to be ongoing. And so, if we were living in a world where there was no violence, you know, um, you know, but maybe we just had minor things happening to us every day, you know, we would still need to practice healing every day. I think the the more that we're in the front lines doing work around ending, you know, dismantling oppressive systems and also just showing up in the world as a person of color, we have to do all the more healing, right? Um, we have to dedicate time every day. And I know it's hard, especially like I'm a new parent, you know, um, a lot of you just have so much on your plate, but there has to be a constant intentional time dedicated to healing and taking care of yourself, doing what things do that bring you joy being around community that brings you love and joy, right? Being in places where you can feel comfortable or safe. That has to be ongoing just to bring balance um, to all the work that you're doing, right? And I think there are times when we all need to take breaks, right? There's gonna be a time you need to say, I'm gonna rest, I'm gonna take this month off, right? Or I'm not gonna do anything for the next six months because you know X, Y, Z is going on. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's an ongoing process of always intentionally looking to take care of ourselves. Lexi, what would you um, add to that? I don't know if there is anything to add. Um, we've definitely talked about this before in um, some other webinars as well. So really, I'm just glad to have Natita amplifying the message. And I mean, I, had, or I was writing a couple of things down too that are helpful for me as, as we think about moving, especially racial trauma through the body. And, and because I see clients on a daily basis, I hear so many stories of racial trauma in the workplace, uh, on the street, in the store and parking lots. Um, and one of the things that Natita shared that I think we all need to walk away from, and I, I wrote it down, is the breath is the barometer for how you're doing. And I notice in myself how often I am like holding my breath and don't realize it. And I, you start to feel that like tension and pressure right here. Um, and I know there's something there, even just participating to uh, today. 
um, behind screen, I noticed um, just in stretching and like, where was the need? I could feel it here. And it felt like, it felt like I needed to scream. And there's so many things that I've heard um, from clients about like not having their voices heard, being silenced in the workplace. And that's for me, I know like when I feel tension and tightness here, that means something has to come out. There needs to be a release. Do I need to say something? Do I need to talk to someone? Do I need to go outside and scream? Or is it the humming? Even the humming can help like loosen up some of that energy and move it through. And so it's just all of this is so helpful to take back and and incorporate that into a daily practice. And like Natita said, it doesn't have to take long. We find the pockets where we can. Mm-hmm. And this webinar series has been recorded. So if you want to ever go back to um, Natita's meditation or Lexi's beautiful meditation that she led us through, um, you know, from the very beginning of when we started with the Black Lives Matter movement all the way through the summer and through this fall, if you want to go back to any of those, please feel free. We'll also have those recordings available on our resource guide. But, um, you know, I think something that's really resonated with me during this time and season of my life has been to find my my community to find my, for me, Lexi being my sister, like reaching out, whether it's a text message or some way to just say like, Hey, I'm feeling this. And, and knowing that I have someone who will respond, even if they don't know the answer, but someone I can cry with, be angry with, scream with, be frustrated with, or exchange, um, hilarious, uh, Schitt's Creek, uh, gifts with, <laughs> um, but to find that community, that sisterhood or siblinghood, um, whatever that looks for you, that community, and to uh, lean on each other and support each other and lift each other through this time. So I think that's our time. I'm trying to make sure we don't didn't have any more questions that came up. Um, you all, it's been a, a true honor. I, I really appreciate you all. This is recorded. You, we will send you the recording. We have a resource guide that we put together that we will send you as well. But um, again, thank you so much for coming to this space, for making it what it was. And uh, thank you again to the Trellis Foundation, to Trellis Company. Um, This was the first time that we were able to put together a webinar series for professionals of color and every single guest speaker was a person of color. So it has been um, a true honor for me to be able to cultivate that space for my colleagues and give um, amplify black and brown voices in in this kind of space. And so I've been really, Uh, honored and privileged to do that but you all take care stay safe out there uh, out in the COVID streets take care Uh, take care of your loved ones and and Natita and Lexi any last goodbyes you're good thank y'all yeah thank you everyone and yeah take care of yourselves show yourselves love thank you bye y'all take care